This is a video of the effect of the uh, Vidlite device on the human EEG. Uh, the Vidlite device uh, emits uh, near infrared uh, frequencies of light that penetrate the skull, 5 to 10 centimeters approximately. The frequency of the light is around 810 nanometers, and that frequency uh, resonates with the a cytochrome C molecule that's inside of mitochondria. Uh, the cytochrome C molecule uh, contains uh, iron and copper atoms, and the molecule is essentially a tube. It's uh, been around for billions of years, very important molecule inside the mitochondria where one end of the tube, uh, oxygen comes in, and the other end of the tube, water comes out, and along the way, ATP is uh, released uh, as the energy supply uh, for metabolic activity throughout the body, but in the brain, because the brain is the most metabolically active of all organs, it uh, consumes about 40% of our blood glucose. And the mitochondria are vital in, to energize uh, the 80 to 100 billion neurons making up our brain. Uh, and most of the ATP that comes out is used to maintain the ionic channels in all of those neurons, uh, as well as uh, DNA, RNA repair, protein repair, uh, reduction of free radicals. And so the, the mitochondria are very, very important. The, the Vidlite uh, activates the mitochondria, producing more uh, ATP. And so we wanted to see how does the EG change uh, this person does not have a recording device on. This is from the uh, Vilite website. But this uh, up here is a NeuroGuide recording uh, where we recorded the EEG simultaneously with the light either being on or being off. So we had a baseline period where the light was not on for two or three minutes. And then we turned the light on for about three minutes, recorded the EEG simultaneously. Uh, and that is actually seen here. Uh, then we turned the light off, got another baseline period of about two or three minutes. Then we turned the light on again uh, and got a baseline period. And then we turned it off and got another, I mean, we got an activation period. And then we turned it off and got another baseline. So we had multiple replications and were able to show a very systematic effect on the brain when the light is turned on. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is the... Uh, EEG uh, at the power spectrum. In this case, it's at 11 hertz. This is the alpha. It's around uh, 4.5 microvolts squared. But when you turn the light on, the EEG up here is up at 15 microvolts um, squared. Uh, so it's about four times larger power is produced when the light is on. Uh, if you look at the Z scores, they're, they're pretty small. This is a healthy person. Uh, but with the light on, uh, you've really ramped up the amount of power in this in the alpha band and in other frequencies. Now, we can examine in more detail the effects of uh, the light by going to our Neurostat program and going down to individual statistics and then comparative statistics and go to the paired t-test. And what we'll do is we'll select the light on period, and then I'm going to select the baseline period with no light on, and we're going to examine how the Brobman areas change as a function of the light on versus the light off. There's 120 degrees of statistical freedom, uh, degrees of freedom, uh, which is a, a, a significance at, at 0 0.001 is 3.37. So let's, let's go to about 3.5. I'm going to fix the maximum. I'm going to close this window. Uh, I'm also going to activate the 3D surf. It's a nice way to look at the brain. Uh, it's a three-dimensionally rendered uh, surface in Loretta. Uh, and there's slight significance uh, at one hertz, and, but typically the lower frequencies are diminished when the light goes on. There's, that is, there's less energy being generated by the lower frequencies, but more energy generated by the higher frequencies. So we're right now at five hertz, the medial frontal lobes, and the anterior cingulate gyrus here are uh, diminished. It's a T of, of 4, 0.79. It's significant at 0 0.001. Uh, and now we're going to 8, uh, 9. There's a little increase in the left uh, hemisphere there. Um, that's in the temporal and insula. 
uh, regions. And uh, now some diminished there, but uh, right at this frequency, it's a standard deviation, I mean, a, a T of 5.28, that's in the middle of frontal lobes. And now we're up to 6.9, um, T of 6.9, and you can see the temporal and um, bilateral temporal and frontal are highly different. They're elevated compared to the baseline. And this is the, uh, uh, the cuneus and the uh, posterior cingulate gyrus, uh, which are part of the default network. We found that the default network is the network that is most affected by the light. That also happens to be the most energetic network in the brain. Anyway, there's bilateral temporal lobes here. Uh, it's 8.69 uh, T, and it's at 13 hertz. And so we'll just keep going up to 14. That's 8. Now the right hemisphere gets lit up. Uh, that's at a, a T of, of 10. This is 8.29. That's 17 hertz, 18 hertz, 19 hertz, 20 hertz. Uh, significant at, uh, in this case, a T of uh, 6.8. It's highly significant. But as we get up to 22 hertz, we see T's now up uh, 7, and we get higher. It's 23 hertz, 24 hertz, 25 hertz. Uh, here's 25 hertz. That's a, the T of 11. It's highly significant. Again, the bilateral temporal insula uh, of, of the brain, particularly the right side, gets lit up, uh, gets activated by the light. This is the middle temporal gyrus, uh, superior temporal gyrus, uh, and uh, the insula on the right. And that has a T of uh, 11.36. Here's 27 hertz. It's a T of 14 at 28 hertz, 29 hertz, it's a T of 14.9. Again, the right hemisphere, you can see it over here. Uh, and then at 30 hertz, that's more going up. And um, so you can see here, this is 17.56 standard deviations. So we can also do a movie, uh, which is interesting to watch. I'm going to uh, set this to a delay of 600. And then I turn the movie on. It will go from 1 hertz to 30 hertz. We'll start it now, and you'll be able to see. I'll move this rendered head around so you can see how this uh, changes. That's 1 hertz. Uh, we're at 5 hertz. 9 hertz. There's a 13 15, 16, 7, 19 hertz, 20 hertz, 22, 23 hertz, 26, 27, 28, 29, there's 30 hertz. So the movie, movie over, it does show you uh, the magnitude of the change, and especially in those higher frequencies. Now we also can look at the percent changes using, again, Neurostat. So we'll go up here to Neurostat and uh, do individual statistics. This is for the surface, looking at percent differences. For all these uh, features of, of Neuroguide, we're again going to look at the bilight on area versus the um, pre-baseline period. And these are percentages uh, of change. And this is on bands. I'm going to go on down here to one hertz, so we can see exactly what's going on. This is one hertz, two hertz, three hertz. When it's blue, so this is by light on minus the baseline, uh, that means that there is reduced power uh, when the by light goes on from one to five hertz, there's reduced power. Uh, there's elevated power at nine hertz, 11 hertz, 13 hertz. This whole region here is 29% higher power. And there's re this is 20 hertz here. I'm going to go up to the higher ranges. This is 21 hertz. You can see 22 hertz, uh, that right uh, temporal region, the right uh, region again at 27. There's 30 hertz. This is a 28% difference in the surface. Before, we were looking at Loretta, which is actually the Broadman areas, the sources of the EG, and three dimensions. Now we're looking at the surface expression of those. And you can see this elevated power in the right going all the way up, that's at 40 hertz, and then we can go all the way up to 50 hertz, and the brain has been activated, particularly in the right hemisphere, 
uh, by the Vilite. So the, this is a very clear demonstration of the ability of Vilite to uh, activate the brain through uh, the ATP uh, delivery, uh, through the cytochrome C engagement uh, of the uh, mitochondria and uh, giving rise to increased power uh, in the higher frequencies. This uh, has been observed multiple times now, but I thought it was, it's interesting to uh, see it in a video so that uh, uh, people can learn more about it. It is a pretty interesting method.